Welcome back to Nader 18 Picks. Uh, week five in the books. Let's do a quick recap. Got nine games right, five games wrong. The ones I had wrong, I had the Jaguars over the Col I had the Colts over the Jaguars. Colts lost. I had the uh, Pats over the Dolphins. The um, Pats lost. I had uh, Niners over Cardinals. Niners lost. I had upset alert of the week. Rams over Packers. Uh, Rams lost. And then I had the Seahawks over the Giants. The uh, Seahawks lost that game. So five games wrong, nine games right. Uh, some notable scores that were close, uh, Cowboys over Steelers, 23-20, the final score of the game was 20-17, to Cowboys win, and the Saints to the Chiefs, I had the Chiefs winning 23-17, to the final score was 26-13, to so pretty similar, close right there. Alright, without further ado, let's, uh, oh and also, <laughs> Jets-Vikings, the final score of that game was, um, I believe, 23-17, uh, uh, and I had the game 20-21, to so some close scores around the league. Uh, our overall record is 47. My, yours truly's overall record is 47 and 31. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead to week six. Uh, before I go into that, of the teams on by, there's uh, 14. There's 14 matchups and there's four teams on by. The by teams on by for week six is the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, LA Rams, Miami Dolphins, and Minnesota Vikings. Now let's look at the schedule real quick. <laughs> All right, let's not waste no more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thursday Night Football, uh, two NFC West teams, two NFC West opponents, both coming off losses. The 49ers at the Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks hosting uh, at home now, lost last week at home to the Giants, who are looking, uh, who are actually surprising some people. And the Niners have lost two home games so far this year. Well, one home game, and they lost a road game as well. Um, they have uh, two road games they've lost. So this one here, a big task for both teams. Uh, the Seahawks had a healthy Kenneth Walker last week and couldn't get him going. Uh, Geno Smith has dropped back and passed the ball a lot. DK Metcalf had a costly fumble in that game. As for the Niners, uh, Debo Samuel, uh, under 30 total offensive yards. It's not going to get it done. Brandon Ayuk had the breakout game, though. But they stalled in drives and couldn't finish in the second half. They scored zero points in the second half and lost to a division foe in the Cardinals. Um, I think both teams are going to struggle. They are going to play kind of desperate. Uh, they're going to commit some penalties. I think the Seahawks will make a little bit more mistakes. I think they'll get less pressure on the on Brock Purdy compared to the Niners getting pressure on Geno Smith. If the Seahawks can get, establish their run game, that's going to hurt them in this game. And I think the Niners prevail here on the road, 27-18 to 18 on this uh, Thursday night football matchup. Now we have another London game for this week. The uh, So it'll be early window. It's like uh, 8 a.m. in the morning uh, Eastern time. Uh, Jaguars at the Bears. Jaguars are usually... Featured in in London, Bears coming off are now a five hundred team. Uh, DJ uh, Caleb Williams and DJ Moore uh, have a good connection now. Had two touchdowns over hundred yards for DJ Moore last week against the Panthers. A little revenge game there for him as the Panthers was the team that drafted him back in twenty eighteen. The Jaguars, Brian Thomas Jr. looking like a, a stud, a rookie wide receiver, and they finally won a game uh, last week against the Colts. Uh, had them losing, but I think they. That kind of good can help them get back on track. Look for Tank's, Tank Bigsby, their backup running back, to get more carries than their starter, Travis Etienne. And if uh, Trevor Lawrence can limit the mistakes against this uh, ball-hawking Bears defense, I think the Jaguars have a chance here. But I think the Bears uh, are going to keep establishing the run, play action, use, utilize their weapons in a good way. And I think the Bears prevail here uh, uh, over the pond in London. I think they win here as the home team, 30-26 to over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Commanders at the Ravens, probably one of the more intriguing matchups of week five, of week six. Commanders four and one going into Baltimore three and two. That uh, came back and beat Cincinnati after being down ten points in the fourth quarter. Huge performance by Lamar Jackson, Isaiah Likely, and all those off weapons on offense. Uh, this is going to be a good matchup. I think whichever team can possess the ball the longest, control the clock with the run game the most, I think uh, has the most advantage in this game. Brian Robinson Jr. against this Ravens front seven, and uh, Derrick Henry against this. Uh, Commanders front seven, which has looks new and improved with uh, upgrades with uh, uh, upgrades Frankie Louvu, Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Um, they have a they have a, a Dante Fowler on that defense. A lot of new pieces that are actually uh, working pretty efficiently for him. I think the Ravens do have that edge here, edge here though at home. Specifically, uh, they've lost their first few games of the season. Now they're starting to come into their own. Their defense is very hard to to counter and maneuver, maneuver to. Jaden Daniels is going to have to test the secondary as they've given up a lot of pass yards as showed by Joe Burrow last week, that he's going to have to utilize some of his playmakers if their running game gets stifled by this Ravens front seven. I think the Ravens win here, 34-17. to 17. Could be completely wrong, but it's just one of those games where I think Jaden Daniels will struggle against these exotic looks from the Ravens. Could be different, uh, could be wrong, though. 
Cardinals at the Packers. I predicted the Packers losing an upset last week. Now they return home uh, and host the Cardinals team that came off of a huge upset last week against the 49ers. I think the Cardinals here can take advantage of the Packers front seven and run the ball. Uh, in the back end, they're pretty good. Uh, Xavier McKinney, uh, interception in each of his first five starts with a new team, uh, leading the league as well. I think Kyler Murray is going to have to look out for him. Marvin Harrison Jr. and Michael Wilson is going to be getting tar targeted more as he was a big part of their coming back and winning that game last week against San Francisco. Uh, Kyler Murray on the ground, very efficient. They need to keep that a threat along with James Conner, who seems to get more physical each game. Uh, another uh, running back product from the 2017 draft class, which has featured a lot of good names. I think the Cardinals come close, but I think the Packers, I, I, this is, I, I'm favoring the Packers to win because I think the Cardinals pass rush don't get home when they need to against Jordan Love, uh, who is getting the ball out of his hands with a tremendous amount of uh, acceleration and juice as his receivers are, him and his receivers are on the same page more than often. Uh, so I think the Packers here went at home against the NFC East, uh, NFC West team, 31 to 29. Moving on now, Texans at the Patriots. Patriots uh, look didn't look very well last week against the Dolphins as a home game. Another home game here against the Texans. Uh, Nico Collins, uh, questionable to play in this game. But you do have Tank Dell for the Texans. You do have Stephon Diggs. Dalton Schultz was making some big grabs on third downs for you in that for you in that game for CJ Stroud. Uh, and their offensive line committed less penalties as a team. I think this is going to be the key to them to uh, control the clock and control the game against the Patriots team that's not very good overall. So I think the Texans win on the road here, 30 to 13. Moving on, we got the Buccaneers at the Saints. Big matchup here. Marshawn Lattimore, Mike Evans. That's one clash that we don't get tired of seeing. Uh, this front seven for the for the Bucks, who are very good against the run against the Saints team that haven't really gotten to establish their run game, although they run it the most uh, in the league. They struggled last week against Kansas City, and Derek Carr got a little hurt and nicked up in that game, so he may not play this game as well. I expect him to play. The Saints are home. I think the Buccaneers are just a little bit more... I think they're riding a better mo uh, momentum. Baker Mayfield has to make wise decisions. The Saints defense can be exotic, uh, as they have good players on each of their fronts. So I think this is going to be key for them to win. But if they get on top early here and can stop the Saints running game, I think the, the Buccaneers have a chance to win a division matchup here at NFC South. I think the Buccaneers win 27-22 to in the Big Easy. Browns at the Eagles. Uh, Browns, uh, Eagles coming off of a bye week, much needed. They had some injuries uh, at their receiver positions. I think the Browns uh, will pose a big threat. I think at least Devontae Smith will be back. I'm not so sure about A.J. Brown. And I think the Eagles will run the ball here as they've seen their other division opponents have success, like the Giants. Uh, commanders and even the Cowboys against the, the Browns. So this will be the Browns final game against the NFC's opponent. Uh, I don't think they're, they haven't won a game against them yet. This could be the game, but as for right now, coming off a of bye, I think the Eagles at home in particular won't pull off a doozy. Uh, a doozy. And if they do, uh, it, it won't say much because uh, the Browns are also a struggling team. Uh, they may be this close to benching Deshaun Watson. So if they come out on the winning end, then you won't see that anytime soon. But if they lose, it could be possible. So I think the Eagles do win at home here, 25-14 to 14 over the Cleveland Browns. Now, the uh, last game of the early window games at 1 p.m., uh, Colts at the Titans, division matchup here. Uh, this, this is intriguing because the Titans had a bye week as well. The Colts almost stunned the Jaguars in a comeback, but lost. They've lost eight of their last nine to the Jaguars, I believe. And uh, now they're playing the Titans team, which benefited from the bye are probably gonna come out uh utilizing their players they have a lot of older receivers but a young young offensive line and pretty dynamic running game if 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 they can uh uh open up create opportunities for their playmakers in the backfield i think they do this against the colts team here who hasn't been great on defense and also has been inconsistent on offense considering that their starting quarterback had didn't start last week and joe flacco came in there and and balled out However, Jonathan Taylor missed last week's game as well. So he's a big piece if they want to beat the Titans. He needs to be healthy for them to excel forward as a team. I think the Titans do win this game. Uh, I don't expect them to win handedly. Uh, I think the Colts are favored. Uh, but I don't have this as an upset. Division games can go either way. I think the Titans win at home here. Uh, proving good in the bye. And maybe Will Levis gets some momentum now that he maybe get benched from Mason Rudolph. Because he came in that game against the Dolphins. Albeit a, a, a not as good team. But hey, a win is a win, and uh, Rudolph may want to, you know, the Titans may want to come to a decision there. But as for now, Titans win 24-20 at home against the Colts. Now we get into the 4.05 p.m. slate of games later in the day. Chargers at the Broncos, two division NFC West opponents. A lot of divisional uh, matchups this week. Uh, the Broncos at home have been good. I think the Chargers uh, still have some injuries, um, missing a couple of other players at the O-line. 
Uh, but I have one healthy. I think this could be a very good matchup. I think they're going to compete. And uh, but I think this Broncos defense is on fire. And I think uh, no matter how late or early it is in the year, they're going to be, be a pretty consistent unit. And the Chargers have to be able to create mismatches for their wideouts and run the ball against this front. Uh, uh, J.K. Dobbins got off to a hot start this year, but has slowed, been slowed down the last two weeks. So we need to see what they can do there. As for Justin Herbert, too, uh, I think he had a probable... was hurt coming into this game but he should be be playing i think the broncos get their uh i believe this will be their it would be their thir fourth straight game they, they start 0 and 2 they're 3 and 2 now this could be their fourth straight win uh, at my house stadium against another division opponent i think they win 20 to 17 and uh keep going and um the chargers are gonna have to figure some things out steelers at the raiders uh this is a rematch of uh Immaculate reception. These two teams played last year as I think the Steelers came out on top. Devontae Adams had a big game. Devontae Adams is not active this game. The Raiders are at home. Uh, the Steelers coming off a loss at home against the Cowboys in which they got nicked up at edge rusher. I think they get one of these edge rushers back. Either this Highsmith or Heberg. I think they can take advantage of the, uh, the, the Raiders lack of run game as I think they're going to look for a, a nine-year vet and Amir Abdullah to be their featured back. And not many receiving weapons as Jacoby Myers and Trey Tucker, but Brock Bowers can give them some problems as this uh, as um, as the Cowboys showed last week with their tight end matched up against the the, the linebacking core. Look for the Raiders to do that for their playmaker. But other than him, I don't think there's much the Raiders can do to attack them. And for that, I see the Steelers going into Las Vegas and winning twenty one to sixteen. Falcons at the Panthers. This is gonna be my upset alert of the week. My upset alert of the week. I got the. Panthers at home against the Falcons team. They've won some of these games in the past. When the Falcons have been bad and the Panthers have been good, the Falcons have won. So this is one of those tricky NFC South rivalry games. Uh, I'm pulling it off as the upset because uh, the Panthers have been competitive but lost some games. Uh, their run game is pretty solid, and I can see them taking advantage of the Falcons' front seven here. Keep the ball out of Kirk Cousins and that offense's hands after they went on fire last week. I think this could help them out. I know the Falcons did play on Thursday night, so that gives them more time to prepare. But it's one of those things where maybe that could be a bad thing if they come out looking a little sloppy. Uh, maybe have some turnovers against the Panthers team that might get a lucky bounce their way. I think this could be one of those games. It could be completely wrong. But as for now, that's my upset alert of the week. Bryce Young got some snaps in the second half of that game last week in their loss. So maybe he plays more this week if Andy Dalton doesn't look good. But in that case, I wouldn't expect them to win. So I think they do look good with Andy Dalton and Chuba Hubbard in the run game. The Falcons uh, will have probably more total yards, but I think mistakes hamper them this time, uh, as it almost did last week. So I think up to earlier the week is Panthers over the Falcons, 24-20. to 20. Now Lions at the Cowboys. Uh, this is The Lions are favored in this game. The Cowboys coming off the big road win with a, a bulk of injuries that they have to overcome. It's going to be a, a little too much to overcome, I think, this week against the Lions, as they have the top five best offensive line in the game. They've lost their last two matchups to the Cowboys under Dan Campbell. Uh, in both matchups, they were controlling the ball. And especially the one from 2022, uh, Dak's first game back from his injury, they were controlling the, the whole game, most of the game. Uh, and they were down four, ready to score in the red zone. And Jamal Williams fumbled the ball on the one-yard line. Cowboys got the ball and didn't look back from there. As last year, C.D. Lamb, uh, the Cowboys were controlling the ball in the first half until C.D. Lamb fumbled it and it was became a touchback. Then the Lions started to get in a roll, hitting Amon Ross St. Brown in uh, this running game. And then as they were in position to win late in that game. So this time around, a matchup of two 2016 quarterback draftees, Jared Goff and, De and Dak Prescott. I think they both have good games. I think Dak is a little bit more under duress throughout the game than Jared Goff is. as There's just so many injuries on this Cowboys front seven. They have to do enough to stop the run, A, and then B, get pressure on play action passes as, as you're trying to stop the one run. I think that's going to be hard to do against a team like the, the uh, Lions as Jared Goff relies on timing and precision. And if he's not pressured, he's going to connect with most of his passes and receivers as he went 18 for 18 in a primetime game a couple of weeks, uh, little last week, I believe, in a win against the Seahawks. So big challenge for the Cowboys. They have some uh, injured players still uh, at DB. Uh, Deron Bland is out. Kalen Carson questionable. Uh, Michael Parsons isn't playing. So this is going to be a big task for them. I think it's going to be too much to overcome. I think the Lions win here in uh, AT&T Stadium, 28-23. Now it's Sunday Night Football. Bengals at the Giants. The Giants looking a lot better than people thought. The Bengals are currently 1-4. Uh, they lost last week to the Ravens, as I predicted. Uh, I, think they, I think they get a win here on the road. I think uh, the Giants 
I think the Giants had very much running running the football success last week against the Seahawks. I don't think they have as much success against the Bengals front seven. I think they'll, the Bengals uh, defensive end will get some pressure on Daniel Jones, forcing him to be inaccurate and miss some throws, as he was looking pretty good with Darius Slayton last week and without Malik Neighbors. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure if Malik Neighbors is playing this game, but if he is or not, I think the Bengals try to keep roll coverage his way, and I think they're going to force him to try to beat them with someone else. So I think the Bengals uh, come out on top, desperation all the time, if they're early in the season with these losses. I think they come out and utilize all their weapons like they did. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins um, need to find someone to help them be consistent more at tight end and out the backfield. Uh, other than that, I think the Bengals have a chance here against the Giants. But don't sleep on this Giants defense. As if they get pressure on the Bengals, this could be the Giants. This could go the Giants' way as well. But I do think the Bengals uh, on the road against New York beat uh, beat beat the Giants twenty seven to twenty four. That's the Sunday night football game hosted in New York, and now the Monday night football game is also going to be hosted in New York as the Jets just coming off of firing their former head coach Brian Sala, uh, or Robert Sala, uh, now I'll face a Bills team that have lost back to back games. Uh, the Bills are on the road here again uh, after losing their last two games on the road against Texans and the Ravens. So a third road, third straight road game. I think the Bills are stressing the importance of coming out fast and physical against a division opponent, which they lost to in New York last year, Week One. Uh, a game that Aaron Rodgers started but didn't finish because he had he had an Achilles injury in the first drive. This is going to be a, kind of a, like a revenge game for the Bills as they should have put that game away last year and won. Uh, this time around, I think they have a, they're favored as the Jets are kind of like discombobulated at the moment. Talks about trading for Devontae Adams. Uh, what's going to happen to Garrett Wilson? He's he got targeted a lot in that game after saying that he wanted the offense to do something different. I think he caught like twelve passes. They targeted him fifteen times. So. Um, I mean, target the guy, he's a good player, but he's going to be even more disgruntled if they trade for Devontae Adams. He'll be paired up with his buddy, Alan Lazard. Uh, uh, they'll probably send Garrett Wilson pack in if they want to keep some draft picks. Considering the Jets also have Hassan Reddick, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to send him to the Raiders for, for the Raiders to pay him, as they already have paid Max Crosby a max extension and paid for uh, free agent defensive tackle Christian Wilkins. Other than that, though, guys, a lot of free agent talk right there. These teams, uh, obviously, the Jets, they're not looking so, they're not looking like a good organization at the moment. And I don't think they're winning at home here against the Bills. It would be huge for them. They need it, uh, all that. But I think the Bills take care of business. They're a good football team. They're well coached. Sean McDermott is going to go in here and sleep on the Jets and let, give them any chance to uh, sign for life. So I think the Bills care come into, the, come into New York and win 31-19. to That's week six. Uh, we'll break it down at the end of the uh, next week. Enjoy. Team's on by. Got to get healthy. We got a long season ahead. Love you guys.